911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. In today's episode, we're going to talk about self-confidence and decision-making. And in particular, we're going to discuss how this relates to police shootings. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, this episode could not be any more relevant than it is given the current circumstances, the things that we see on TV, on the media, on our social feeds. If you're anything like me, The only time that you hear about instances like what took place in Ohio, where an officer had no other choice in order to maintain his job and uphold his civil duty, but to shoot and then as a consequence kill Micaiah Bryant. If you're not familiar, as I wasn't until somebody brought it to my attention, Micaiah Bryant was out front of what seems like her house with a group of people. There seems to be some type of altercation between her and a young girl who's wearing all pink. I've seen the video several times. All of a sudden, you see Micaiah Bryant yielding this giant, I don't even, it looks like a butcher knife from the kitchen. And she's chasing this girl in pink around with it until she gets the girl in pink held up against a car. And the officer asks her to stop. And she she's at that moment where, almost like you're swinging a baseball bat, you you get it back, you yield it back as far as you can until you're ready to hit that ball. She takes that knife, she yields it back as far as she can until she is ready to just slam it into this girl in pink. Without complying, acting as though she didn't hear anything else in the world going on and she knew that she was on a mission, Micaiah Bryant proceeds to swing her arm forward as though she was going to stab and kill this young girl in pink. Now, the officer, having no other decision there to do his job, to protect the community, actualizing what's happening and making a split-second decision to save the girl in Pink's life, he shoots Micaiah Bryant and subsequently, consequently, consequentially, she dies. Immediately, this camera, this, this person that was videoing all this, because that's what you do in this particular circumstance, pans over to the dad who is just standing there on the stoop of his front porch watching this whole thing take place. Understandably, he's upset, but he starts asking the officer why he would shoot and kill his daughter, why he did that. I can't help but compare what I see on videos like this with how it was when I grew up and how things were when I was 16 years old. I can't imagine something like this ever having happened. And you know why? I was and I still am to this day in a very healthy way, fearful of my father. Clearly, the morals, the upbringing, the way that Micaiah Bryant must have been raised, and I'm saying that as anybody with a good moral compass can say by simply viewing a video like this, it's quite different. Now, why why am I talking about this? Why am I painting this in such vivid detail? I'm painting this in such vivid detail because a very good friend of mine reached out and he says, good morning. I'm not sure if you take episode requests, but I think we cops need something about how to drown out the noise and stay confident about our reasons. Because wow, a cop saves someone's life from a knife attack and he gets hammered for it. Now the woke media has portrayed this as a murder. The woke media has portrayed this as another instance of race. We seem to live in a society now where we fear nothing more than being called a racist. And of course, given everything that has taken place with the Chauvin trial, the media is going to do everything that they can to make sure that everything like this that is caught on camera is portrayed as a black individual being killed or harmed at the hands of a white officer. And the biggest problem with this that I'm seeing right now is I, and being married to a cop, I can very well say this. I am seeing something happen, this big shift take place where there are so many officers who are now choosing an alternative line of work. There are so many officers who 
are deciding what they're going to do when different laws are changing to where they can be held accountable as individuals if they're found them in a particular situation just like this one while they're doing their jobs. Having worked in the medical field for 14 years, I can't help but think of the fact that things like this take place every single day. Only the difference is that the media doesn't make it about color when you have a doctor who performs malpractice in a particular fashion and they kill their patients, which happens at far greater numbers than anything that you see in the line of police work. And yet the, the media is so fixated on everything being about race, color, and police work that they can't shift gears and actually see what the reality and the real numbers are, where other problems, other problems that might be the real problems, the bigger problems exist. So what do we do about this? And I'm talking to the officers who are deciding that no matter what, they took an oath. No matter what, they're going to stay in this. No matter what, they are passionate about the work that they do. And instead of paying attention to the media and to the news, they pay attention to what's inside. They pay attention to what it actually looks like when they leave their front door every day. They pay attention to the real communities that they serve, paying attention to the people that you interact with on a daily basis. You see, you as you listen to this, if you are one of those officers who goes out there and you're on the streets every day, you know that anything that the media is portraying is such a farce. It is so far from the truth and the the legitimacy of what actually takes place out there on the streets when you're patrolling. And of course, we can go into the story of how there's good apples and bad apples in every single profession, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, the bad apples that are in this profession are so minute in comparison to the vetting process that actually takes place to become an officer in the first place. And you know, as you listen to this, even if you're not a police officer, that there are, there's far greater chance that a shady officer is going to be found out by his own colleagues, his own partners, before it ever makes it to the news. So what do we do? What do we do for those officers that are continuing to push forward, those officers that know that they are doing good because they're paying attention to what is true? The first and most important thing is to identify when you're having the self-doubt, when you're second-guessing your actions. Maybe for you, seeing all of these, these stories and seeing the videos of all of these different things that have taken place across the nation, you're starting to second-guess whether some of the things that you've done in the past were things that you should have done. Maybe when you step out of your unit, you're starting to ask yourself if you should behave and act in a different way outside of the scope of the way that you were taught and trained. I would encourage you, while I believe that continued education is not only important, I'm also of the understanding that it's something that you have to do. And I would encourage you to identify when you are starting to have this self-doubt creep in. Literally, stop and tell yourself, I am second-guessing myself right now. Why is that? And I'm going to tell you the number one reason why. I want you to think back to a time where you have been in a toxic relationship, and this could be in an intimate relationship. This could be you've been in a relationship with an employer. Maybe you were young and unfortunate enough to have toxic relationships with your parents or a parent, maybe a sibling, a relative. I want you to think about that for a second because I've pulled some information offline talking about how toxic people are identified. When it comes to toxic people, they're manipulative. Everything is all about them. They're going to use anything that they need to use to accomplish whatever their goal happens to be. Hmm. If that's what a toxic person is, and we compare that to the toxic reality of media, these news outlets, the new woke nation that we one day found ourselves in, sounds pretty similar, doesn't it? You see, toxic people, they don't apologize. They don't see any reason to They always think that it's somebody else's fault. Toxic people might even make you prove yourself to them. What comes up for me is thinking back to May of last year when everything took place with the George Floyd murder. Make no mistake, it was a murder. Do I believe that second degree murder was warranted? No, I don't, but that's a personal opinion. 
They make you prove yourself to them. I'm thinking about all of those officers that were so backed into a corner that they had no choice but to start kneeling. Remember that? Those officers that felt like they had no choice but to put their chest on the ground to make themselves feel less than, to start second-guessing themselves. I would venture to say that this was all due to a lack of confidence. And why was it due to a lack of confidence? Well, it was because of the toxic relationship that you as an officer have now found, perhaps not within your department, and I hope not within your department, but certainly within the nation. Within the nation that is falsified based on the narrative that sells. You see, with toxic people, they're incredibly inconsistent. When we relate a toxic relationship and we think about the woke, the woke culture and we're comparing what it looks like versus what the true narrative is when you go out there and you're policing every single day, it seems like there's something else at play here, don't you think? You see toxic people, they're inconsistent and it's really hard to know who you're actually dealing with on any given day because they show up and they're a different person every time that you interact with them. And maybe as you're listening to this, somebody is coming to mind. Maybe as you're listening to this, the Channel 7 news that you watch is coming to mind. Maybe as you listen to this, a certain Facebook page that you follow is coming to mind. There's a lot of inconsistencies with toxic relationships. Another thing worth mentioning is that when it comes to a toxic relationship, toxic people disregard your boundaries. And it does not matter if you've requested that they stop behaving in a certain way. Maybe you're an officer and you've begged for people to start seeing the light instead of seeing these false narratives. To start showcasing some of the positive work that you do instead of some of the negative outcomes that are so few and far between when you think about that. Toxic people actually boast about their achievements. Toxic people are people who feel inferior and they spend their time overcompensating to make themselves appear that they're superior to others. Does that sound like you versus them? I think it does. Who are we talking about when we're talking about them? We're talking about the people who are creating these false narratives, whether it's Black Lives Matter whether it's the media, whether it's a particular news station that you listen to. So what do we do about that? How is it that you can go to work every day, still choose this career, despite being handed these cards, these cards that you didn't choose? My husband and I were talking about how different policing is from the time that he started 14 years ago to how things are now. We can't imagine <laughs> the differences. And of course, this isn't something that we ever planned for. We didn't anticipate for things to look this way. You didn't either. The shift that needs to happen, the process that needs to take place, it all starts with you. And this applies to those of us that aren't in police work. I think that no matter what your line of work is, no matter what career you've decided to devote your time and attention to, there will always be times when we start to second guess ourselves. And the reason that we do that is because we have a lack of self-confidence. And when we have that lack of self-confidence and we've identified it, we recognize that it's existing. You're asking yourself if you made the right decision. You're asking yourself if you should have done something else. Maybe we're not talking about careers at all. Maybe we're talking about your personal life. Should you have performed or operated in a different way? After we've identified that we're having that self-doubt, I think it's time for us to do some real reflection and to get true with ourselves. And the first way that we do that is to trust ourselves. We make that, that shift, that cognitive shift, and know that you showed up and you did the best that you could. You performed and you operated in that way, especially if you were only given a split second amount of time to make a particular decision. And the stakes of your career, the stakes of your job, the work that you do every day, it's going to vary in degree. That factors in to the process of decision making. And as it relates to police work, you have trained your entire career. You continue to train your, your entire career. You have your briefing, you have your conversations with other partners, you have your experience and relationships out there in the communities that you serve. 
So start to choose a new thought. And instead of second guessing yourself, start to identify all of the pieces that were built into that decision that made you make that decision. Assess what you've learned after making this particular decision. Would you make the same decision again? It's not easy asking ourselves questions like this. I know that it's not easy because it's time consuming and a lot of us make excuses as to why we should or shouldn't go through the process. But I think that in a realm that we're living in today, especially with police work, it's important for us to get real with ourselves and understand that a lot of what you're feeling is actually influenced externally. It has nothing to do with you. With police work, you're living in this society now where you go to work and you're trying to do your job. And every day that you're trying to do your job, you see one thing and the narrative that you see on news, on the news, on the media is something completely different. And sure, there's going to be naysayers. Why are there naysayers? Why do you hear people with the rhetoric in your day-to-day living? Well, those people are probably at home glued to their television screens nonstop. Those are the type of people that are probably sitting around the kitchen table with their family glued to their phones instead of actualizing what's going on in real life at the kitchen table. I want to encourage you, especially if you are somebody who is continuing to dedicate your life and your career to protect the community that you serve. I know that things seem bleak right now. Things seem more uncertain in police work right now than they ever have before. I would ask that you do one thing and limit the media Limit the social media. Limit the time that you spend glued to the television because whether or not you realize it, the woke narrative is being interjected in almost everything that you consume unless it's something that you have control over. I'm going to say that again. It is being interjected in everything that you consume unless it's something that you have control over. If you're tuning into a nightly sitcom, if you're watching one of your favorite television shows, this woke narrative is being interjected in that. This race card is being interjected everywhere that you see in the educational system. Every time that you turn on the television, maybe if you're you're listening to what I would deem unhealthy radio sources, everything that you consume is going to have this unnecessary mostly untrue narrative interjected into it unless it is something that you control. Control what you are consuming, control the people that you allow yourself to be surrounded with, and know that you are doing the best that you can and that you're going to continue to do the best that you can by going to work every day, listening to your instincts, relying on your training, continuing to pursue training, being proactive in the training that you consume, And you can't see me right now, but I'm pointing up here at your head. You control the narrative unless you allow them to control it for you. And you're not made for that. Know that I'm here to support you in any way that I can. Please reach out to me on Facebook at Ashley Walton. And if you've gotten any value out of this episode, do me a favor, drop a review and subscribe down below. And know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.